Praise the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer before the study. Father, we thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for your word that ever remains fresh. And thank you for the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow tonight. All contrary powers will be cast out in Jesus' name. Blessing for everyone. Deliverance for everyone. Authority for everyone. And whatever we will bind here on earth is bound in heaven in Jesus' name. Set everyone free. Confirm your word in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. I welcome everyone to the Bible study tonight. And I pray that God will give us an open heart, open eyes, open mind to receive everything is revealing to us in Jesus' name. Today we're looking at Mark chapter 5, and we'll be studying from verse 1 all through to verse 20. Let me start with verse 1. And they came over onto the other side of the sea. Stop there for a moment. They came over to the other side of the sea. Let me bring you back to Mark chapter 4. Verse 35, and the same day when the evening, evening was come, he says unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. You link that, connect that with chapter 5 verse 1. And he came over unto the other side of the sea. The Lord had given the word. He declared the word, and whatever word he declared was a decree, and it's still the same today. Jesus, the same yesterday, and today, and forever. And whatever he declares in your life becomes a decree. And as he gave that declaration, and he gave that decree, the storm arose in between the declaration and the destination. There was a storm, but the storm could not stop the declaration of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, in my life, in the church, in your family. Between the declaration and the destination, no storm will cancel that word of the Lord in your life. It was impossible. And it is still impossible today that Satan will raise up any storm, any crisis, any problem that can totally annul, destroy, or cancel the declaration of the Lord Jesus Christ, as they came over to the other side, what happened in chapter 5? One, there was a demonic problem waiting. Two, there was disease to be cured. And three, there was death to be cancelled. And because of that threefold problem, demon, disease, and death, that he was to solve the problem. That's why the storm came. But well, thank God, your storm is over. As he came to the other side, now there's going to be demonstration, demonstration of power against demons, against disease, and against death. Tonight, we're looking at that first part, Christ's power and authority over all demons. That's the subject tonight, Christ's power 
and authority over all demons. In this chapter 5, verses 1 through to 20, we're looking at three things. Number one, the authority of Christ over all demons. The authority of Christ over all demons. Number two, the antagonism against Christ after the deliverance. He delivered the man. Those evil spirits went into the swine and they rushed and perished in the ocean in the sea. And because of that, all those people that saw it, they said, don't stay with us. Go away from us. We don't want you. Antagonism against Christ after the deliverance. Point number three, an ambassador for Christ throughout the Capolis. The man who was delivered, the man who was set free, wanted to follow Jesus in the way. And the Lord said, go back home and tell your friends in all the Capolis. Tell your friends everywhere, the people who have rejected me and the people who will not have me because they love their swine more than their salvation. Go tell them the good thing, the great thing, and the gracious thing the Lord has done unto you. He became an ambassador, an ambassador for Christ throughout the Catholics. Come back to point number one. The authority of Christ over all demons. We're reading from verse one. Look at verse one. It says, and they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the gatherings. And when he was come out of the sheep, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plugged asunder by him, and the fetters broke him. In pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure you, I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not. For he hath said, for Christ hath said, for Jesus hath said unto him, Come out of the man. Thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them out of the country. Now there was there, nice unto the mountains, a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils, all the demons, all the evil spirits besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith, Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000, and they were choked in the sea. Christ has authority. Christ has power. And that power remains today. 
that when he said go, just one word, all those demons, thousands of them, legion, and then they went into those 2,000 swine pigs and they perished. As we look at this, I see number one, the activity and the characteristics of demons. As you look at Mark chapter 5, you have this man in verse 2, it says, he was in the tomb. He will not stay in the house. The devil drove him to a place of darkness, a place of departed spirits. And it says in the latter part of verse 2, he had an unclean spirit. In verse 3, it says, he was dwelling among the tombs. He was separated from society. He will not fit in society because the demons have made him not to be compatible with society. Are there people like that? They cannot stay quietly in the midst of other people. Either they are shouting or they are screaming or they are crying or they are enjoying themselves because they cannot live at peace in the community of people. Not only that, he had a kind of extra human power. They bound him with fetters and they bound him with chains and it was like uh, nothing could bind him. He broke the chains in pieces. Now you understand there are people like that. They have this problem that you try to help and you try to bind and you try to make them keep quiet. They cannot. An evil spirit, a demon has taken over their lives. In a latter part of verse 4 it says, And neither could any man tame him. Have you noticed people that they are beyond themselves and they want to control themselves? They cannot. Other people want to trim the, tame them. They cannot. Other people want to bring them quiet. They cannot because another power is working in their lives. And they are the people that will say, you know, I'd like to be quiet, but I couldn't. I like to stay calm, but I couldn't because nothing and nobody could tame them. And always night and day, in verse 5, he was in the mountains. He was jobless. He had thrown away profession. He had taken he had a kind of a taking to the mountains. And he was like that, crying and caught himself. He was feeling the pain. That's why he was crying. And yet, all the crying and all the pain could not stop him. He was still hurting himself and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus, he ran to worship him. But then the next verse says, he cried out and says, What have I to do with you, Jesus, thou son of the most high? Have you seen, uh, you know, those two have double personalities. On the one hand, they are running to Jesus as if they want something from Jesus. When they get to Jesus, then they are saying, what have I to do with you? Get away from me. It was not the man. It was the evil spirit. You know, sometimes you find people like that. They want to do good. And they come to church. And they come. They say they are coming to Christ. And they are even running. I must not miss anything in the service. And now they come to the service they turn to be another person and then they'll be crying out we don't want that we don't want bible we don't want the teaching of the word of god but you are the one running and you are coming and now that you have come you turn to be another man split personality and jesus said come out of him whatever personality is driving anyone distracting anyone it will come out tonight in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 17. Mark chapter 9, verse 17. The activity and the characteristics of demons. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which has a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he cheereth him, and foameth, and gash and gnashes with his teeth. 
and pineth away. And I speak to the disciples that they should cast him out, and he could not. See this one? Uh, it wasn't like the other man were here because the characteristics of demons vary from person to person. This one will foam in the mouth, and this one will gnash with the teeth and cut his uh, own uh, tongue with his teeth, and then he's pining away, he's dying away. And sometimes he'll fall into the water, and sometimes into the fire. And they answered him, saying, O oh, faceless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he began to tear himself, but people will not understand. It's the evil spirit. When you find people like that, tearing themselves, destroying themselves, cutting themselves, doing evil to themselves. It's not them, it's the evil spirit. And he fell to the ground and wallowed for me. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came upon him? And he said, of a child. And often times it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us, on him, on me, on the mother, on the family, and help us. Jesus says unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Tonight, all things are possible to everyone who believes in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 8, the activity and the characteristics of demons. Luke chapter 8, verse 29. In verse 29, for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for often times it had caught him. And he was kept bound in chains or chains and in fetters, and he break the bands and was driven of the devil into the desert, driven of the devil, running when there was nobody chasing him. He had seen an evil personality, evil power, and now he's running and running to the wilderness. But Jesus could solve the problem. And Jesus will solve our problems. And Jesus will solve my problem. He will in Jesus' name. The authority of Christ over demons. The authority of Christ over demons. Look at verse 8. And he said unto him, Come out of the man thou unclean spirit come out of the man thou unclean spirit and he asked him what is thy name and he answered saying my name is legion for we are many there were thousands of them and those thousands of demons had different diverse characteristics and there are people, you see them today, there's a characteristic being manifested. Another day, another negative thing. I say, I cannot understand. It's not him, it's not her. It's because of the many diverse, different, dangerous demons operating in that life. Today you are free. And he besought him much that he will not send them away out of the country. Do you notice that language there? Look at verse 10. He, singular. That's the man talking. That's the chief of those demons talking. And then it says that he besought him, besought Christ much, that he, Christ, will not send, tell me the next word, them, plural. That is, he, 
the chief demon, the commanding demon, the controlling demon, the one that controls all the others, besought the Lord that he will not cast them, now in their thousands, out of the country. Now there was there, near to the mountains, a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils, plural, thousands of them, besought him Christ, saying, Send us, plural, into the swine, that we may enter into them. How do you understand that? They would have preferred to stay in the man. The man is a better house, better accommodation, better habitation for them. But if you're going to send us out, our next priority will be so that we're not just in the air room, in the bouch, in the desert, in the wilderness. Send us into the animals, into the swine. And forthwith Jesus bid them, gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down as the evil spirits were driving the man. Now they, were, they drove the swine into the sea. About 2,000 of them and our church and they perished. And they that fed the swine fled. And they told each in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil. And at the legion sitting and closed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Jesus has power. And today, he still has the power. And his word always comes out with authority and power. Come to chapter 9. Chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 22. Chapter 9, verse 22, and of times, it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Can Jesus do anything in your personal life? Can Jesus do anything in your family? Can Jesus do anything in that person you are concerned about? Can Jesus do anything? He can and he will. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, I command thee, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the evil spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead in so much that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? But you will. I said you will. Why could we not cast him out? The ability to cast out demons. We're coming to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, reading from verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Any believer in the house today? Any believer at the study today? And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, tell me. Have you gone to sleep? I said, tell me. 
Say it as if it will happen. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. Amen. They shall take up serpents. Amen. And if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. Give me a good amen. amen. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. The ability to cast out devils for every believing brother, every believing sister, it will happen through you. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Even the demons are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. It will happen. We're coming now to point number two. And we're reading from Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, we're reading from verse 12 all through to verse 17. Mark chapter 5, verse 12. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000, and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled, and told each in the city, and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and urge the legion. Notice that possessed with the devil, singular, that he is the chief of them. But then they explained, urge the legion. Thousands living there, tormenting him. They saw him now sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. Point number two, the antagonism against Christ after the deliverance. Those who had seen and had witnessed the deliverance of the demoniac and the drowning of the swine, they ran back to the city with the news. And then they said, why well, have you done that? How is it that all the swine were totally destroyed? Maybe you have that question in your mind. How is it that Christ helping a man allowed 2,000 pigs to be destroyed? You know why? The children of Israel, the Jews, were not supposed, they were forbidden to eat swine or pig. And if they could not eat swine, they should not be raising a swine to sell to the people. And so because they were forbidden to raise swine or to eat swine, 
That's why the Lord permitted that. And those illegitimate work they were doing perished with the deliverance of the man. Not only that, the soul of the man was worth more than all the peaks in the world. What shall he profit a man? If he shall gain, if he shall have all the peaks in the world and lose his own soul, the soul of one person was greater than all the peaks. That's why it happened. But the people did not understand. And because of their lack of understanding, and they add more value for the peaks than for the soul of the man. That's why they drove Jesus away. They were antagonistic. And they said, we don't want you in our community. Look at three things here. Number one, a clear liberation from evil spirits. A clear liberation. The man was liberated, was delivered, and it was very clear. Look at verse 15. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and closed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. It was a clear liberation. And when God touches your life, like he will do tonight, it will be very clear everywhere you go. When we're truly converted, there will be clear demonstration of that conversion, of that liberation. Ephesians chapter 4. In Ephesians chapter 4, I read from verse 20. Ephesians chapter 4, we're reading from verse 20. In verse 20, but she have not so learned Christ, if so be that she have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. And what's the evidence that you are liberated and converted by him that she put off concerning the former conversation, the old man? which is corrupt according to the deceitful laws, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That man was renewed. That man became restful. That man became peaceful. It was a clear evidence of his liberation. When you are renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that she put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. That's the evidence that you are totally liberated. The former things are passed away. A new life is now visible in your character. In First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. I read from verse 13, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, Wherefore, gather up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to your former lusts, in your ignorance, your former lusts, that's gone. Your former behavior, that's gone. Your former truancy, violence, that's gone. Your former disobedience, that's gone. A new life has come. And it is that new life that shows a clear liberation from your past. In verse 15, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Number two, a consuming love for their swine. Mark chapter 5, reading from verse 16. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. 
And they began to pray him. And they began to tell him. And they began to push him away to depart out of their coasts. They loved the forbidden swine more than they loved the Savior. A consuming love for the forbidden. Look at Leviticus chapter 11. Leviticus chapter 11. Reading from verse 7 and verse 8. And the swine, though he divides the hoof, and be cloven footed, yet he choose not the cord. He is unclean to you. The swine is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch, for they are unclean unto you. And we find these Israelites, not only that an individual will not eat, they raised up a company, they raised up a profession, they raised up a work to do, and the work was to be producing that which the Almighty God had forbidden. And now they had such love, consuming love, to that swine that even when the deliverance came to the man, they drove Jesus away because of that. Those people loved the pig more than their soul, more than the Savior, more than their salvation. Three, the costly love of their souls. Come to Mark chapter 5, verse 17. Mark chapter 5, verse 17. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. They said their souls could be lost. That's all right for them. Since their swine had been lost, they also could lose their soul. The costly loss of their souls. Mark chapter 8, reading from verse 36. Mark chapter 8, verse 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? If you could gain all the swine in the world, all the pigs in the world, all the poultry in the world, all the money in the world, all the material things in the world, and you lose your soul, what's your gain? But these people do not consider the loss of their soul. Look at verse 37. Or oh, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? There are people who love material things more than salvation. They love earthly things more than their souls. And they perish. I pray you will not perish. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. I read from verse 18. Philippians chapter 3 verse 18. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. There are people who are not conscious, they have a soul, a soul to save, a heaven to get to. A hell to escape. And the apostle said, I think about them, I weep. I talk about them, I cry. And when I meditate on their destiny and what they're doing to themselves, it says, I am weeping continually. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. The glory in feeding the swine. The glory in doing a shameful thing. The mind has listings. I pray that will not happen to you. Mark chapter 5, 
point number three now, an ambassador for Christ throughout the Capolis. An ambassador for Christ throughout the Capolis. We're reading from verse 18. And when he was coming to the sheep, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him, pleaded with him that he might be with him. How be it, Jesus suffered him not, allowed him not, permitted him not, but says unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord had done for thee and has had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in the Capolis how great things Jesus had done for him and all men did marvel. God will use you. In our city, God will use you. Everywhere you go, the Lord will use you in Jesus' name. He became an ambassador, an ambassador for Christ throughout the Capolis. That's what the Capolis actually is a compound word. It means 10 cities, 10 cities. A new convert, a new believer, somebody that was just delivered, newly liberated man. In the Capolis, in all the 10 cities, he began to publish the word of God. And he was a good, successful, effective ambassador. An ambassador for Christ through the Capolis. Three things here. Number one, the test of true conversion. The test of true conversion. Look at verse 18. Chapter 5, verse 18. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him, pleaded with him that he might be with him. He wanted to be with Christ. He's not going to go back to the tombs. He's not going to go back to the mountains. He's not going to go back to those valleys. He's not going to go back to those dark places. He now wanted to be with Jesus, the light of the world. When you're truly converted, the test of genuine true conversion is that you want to be with the Lord. You want to stay with the Lord. You want to abide with the Lord. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Verse 68, the test of true conversion. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. To whom shall we go? We're going to stay with you. We're going to abide with you. You have the words of eternal life. We've heard much. We want to hear more. And we want to stay with you until you take us to that life everlasting. That's the test of true conversion. Look at John chapter 8, verse 31. John chapter 8, verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. That liberated man wanted to stay with Jesus, hearing the word, analyzing the word, meditating on the word, believing the word, and having new experiences through the word. If ye continue, in my word, then are you my disciples indeed? John chapter 15, reading from verses 4 and 5. John 15, verse 4. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. 
he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. The evidence that you have been converted, you're saved, is that you have a change of life. And you're sitting down, and you're calm, and you're peaceful. The wickedness of the past is gone. The violence of the past is gone. The hard drugs you used to take, cutting yourself, cutting yourself, committing slow suicide, gradual suicide. Everything is gone. You are now a new creature in Christ. Point number two now there, the task for true converts. If you are really born again, if you are truly saved, if you are a real child of God, that's a task for you. Look at verse 19, Mark chapter 5, verse 19. Mark chapter 5, verse 19. How be it Jesus suffered him not, but says unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and has had compassion on thee. The task for true converts. John chapter 4, reading from verse 28. John chapter 4, verse 28. And the woman let then left her water pot and went her way into the city and says to the men, Come, see a man we told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. He brought many, she brought many people unto the Lord. That's our task. When you are born again, when you say you are a child of God, when you say you have been liberated, when you say you have been saved, the task of the true disciple, true convert, true child of God is that you go and tell the story of redemption. You go and tell and speak and proclaim and publicize the message of the gospel. Luke chapter 10, verse 37. Luke chapter 10, verse 37. And he said, he that should mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. You see what the liberated man did? Go and do thou likewise. You see what that woman at the well, what she did after her salvation, after she received Jesus, and she knew this is the Christ, this is the Messiah, this is my Savior, this is the giver of the living water. She went to the town to tell everybody to fulfill the task of the true convert. Luke chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 23. Luke chapter 14, verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in. Speak to them, compel them to come in. Preach to them, compel them to come in. Testify unto them. Tell them how great things the Lord has done for you and is willing to do for them. Compel them to come in that my house may be filled. You will be a witness to the Lord in Jesus' name. Now, point number three, the triumph of true consecration. The triumph of true consecration. The people that receive some benefit from the Lord, and then they vanish away. You can't see them anymore. You can't even see them attending church service. You cannot see them witnessing. You cannot see them preaching about Christ who has set them free. But this man had the triumph of true consecration. We're reading from Mark chapter 5, verse 20. Mark 
chapter 5, verse 20. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis, all those ten cities, how great things the Lord had done for him. And all men did marvel. When he spoke, he didn't speak like a mad man, an insane man, a demon possessed man. His life has now totally changed. His language changed. His appearance changed. He was now well dressed as a person touched and transformed by the Lord. And when he spoke about the Lord, he was believable. Look at Luke chapter 8. In Luke chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 39. Luke chapter 8, the same story, but it tells you clearly what he did and the effect of what he did. Luke chapter 8, verse 39. Return to thine house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And he went his way and he published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. He didn't say, I'm a new convert. I won't know what to tell them. I'm afraid of them. I feel shy. It's only the evil spirit that made me bold like an extrovert. But now that the evil spirit is gone, I am shy. I am frightened of people. I'm fearful. I wouldn't know what to tell them. He obeyed the Lord promptly. He will obey the Lord. And he went his way in obedience to what the Lord had said. And he published throughout the whole city. Started with that city out of the ten, how great things Jesus had done unto him. Look at the result, the triumph of true consecration. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. These were the people that had driven him away. These were the people that said, you destroyed our swine, our pigs. We don't want to listen to you. But now because the man became a true ambassador throughout the capolis, they were waiting for him and they heard the word. The Lord will make you a true ambassador of Christ. You will speak the word. You will publicize the word. And many will come to receive the Lord as their personal Savior in Jesus' name. Give me a rousing amen. amen. Acts chapter 26. I'm reading from verse 18. Acts chapter 26, verse 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed forth unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throw out all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. Like all these people who obeyed the Lord, we will obey the Lord. Acts chapter 11, reading from verse 21. Acts 11, verse 21. And the hand of the Lord was of them. And a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. We're going and we're going to scatter throughout the capolis, our cities, and other cities. And we're going to publish what Christ has done. Christ has delivered us. We're going to tell about it. 
Christ has liberated us and we're going to preach it. Christ has saved us and we're going to tell everybody everywhere in Jesus' name. If you're not delivered yet tonight, you're delivered in Jesus' name. If you are not liberated yet tonight, you are liberated in Jesus' name. If there's any power, any spirit still tormenting your life tonight, all the power of torment will be cancelled in Jesus' name. It may be one demon or two or two thousand or six thousand, deliverance has come. I said deliverance has come. The power of Christ still remains the same today. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And what he did for that man and what he did for people like him all over the centuries. Tonight is your night. He'll do it for you. Salvation has come. Healing has come. Deliverance has come. Total liberation has come. And as the Lord delivers you, you will abide with the Lord. You will stay with the Lord. And then in your community, everywhere you go, you'll tell about Jesus the Savior, and Jesus the Healer, and Jesus the Deliverer. And your message will be believable in Jesus' name. And many, many, many people through you will turn unto the Lord. What are you? Are you going to do it? I said, are you going to do it? I said, are you going to do it? Rise up and tell the Lord, tonight is a night of blessing. It's a night of liberation. It's a night of deliverance. It's a night of salvation. And it's a night of total, total redemption. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord and say, yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. I'm here tonight. And I know you will touch my life. I know you will liberate me. Total liberation will come to you. If you ask him, you will do it. You see that's authority today. The authority of Christ over all demons. The authority of Christ over all diseases. The authority of Christ over all disaster. The authority of Christ over all difficulties. The authority of Christ over all challenges. The authority of Christ over every power that may torment your life. Open your mouth. That man opened his mouth and said, Lord, Lord, I want deliverance. Even though something was still, was also knocking, and something was contradicting, as if Christ, what have I to deal with you? Depart from me. But it was the devil. That devil will come out. That evil power will come out. The power that makes you a double personality. You come, and then you want to go. You arrive, you want to depart. You see Christ, and you want to run away from him. And you want something good, and then you want something evil at the same time. That evil thing that makes you a double personality. All that will live your life tonight. Tell him, tell him, tell him, he will. It'll set you free. Break the yoke in your life and destroy the evil sin in your life. Evil spirit will vanish away tonight. All those dangerous things in your life will vanish away tonight. All those things that want to destroy your life, destroy your future, destroy your eternity and make you spend eternity with demons, all those things will vanish away tonight. Call upon him. He saves. Call upon him. He delivers. Call upon him. He forgives. Call upon him. He'll deliver you. From the top of your to the tip of your toe, your head, your brain, your mind, your spirit, your soul, your personality. The Lord will deliver you tonight. Any sin in your life, repent. Don't allow sin and Satan to run your life, to ruin your life, to destroy. Your chance of getting saved. 
he'll forgive if you will repent. Any power stopping you from living right, he'll cast it out. Any power disturbing you from living a righteous life, he'll put his stop to that tonight. Any power that makes sin so strong, evil spirit so strong, evil power so strong, bad behavior so strong, that you couldn't be delivered, tonight is your night. Take that problem, take that personality to the Lord in prayer. He will deliver you. A good life will come. A new life will come. A beautiful life will come. A new behavior will come. New activity in your life. You'll be calm. Violence will go away from your life. Wickedness will go away from your life. You will have power over every sin that has had dominion over your life. Christ is able. Call upon him. Mighty Savior. A mighty deliverer. A mighty redeemer. He'll set you free. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be set free. He'll set you free. Set you free. Set you free. From every evil, set you free. From every sin, set you free. From every chain, set you free. From all the fetters, set you free. From all those difficult challenges in your life that do not allow you to live right, it will set you free. In Jesus' name we pray. And the victorious people of God shout. Yeah. And the expectant people of God shout. Yeah. And the conquering people of God shout. Yeah. You are taking victory back home. Yeah. Liberation back home. Yeah. Healing up back home. Yeah. You'll be more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. And the fear that has tied down your life, your chains are broken. And as you go and tell the story, and tell the news about Christ the Savior, about Christ the Healer, about Christ the Deliverer, about Christ the Redeemer, you'll say that and proclaim that confidently in Jesus' name. And the people you talk to, the Lord will penetrate their hearts of the word. And the word of God will have effect and impact in their lives in Jesus' name. I'll be an ambassador. Where are you? I'll be an ambassador. Where are you? You will be and the word will prosper in your mouth in Jesus' name. Raise up your hands. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, because you have given us the name of Jesus. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every demon will flee away. Every disease will be healed. Oh, Lord, we come against every demon, every legion, every disease, every oppression every evil spirit, and we command, get out in Jesus' name. 
Lord, I pray that demon of bad habit, the demon of habitual sinning, the demon of drugs, and the demon of hurting themselves and killing themselves, slow, slow, gradual suicide. I command, come out of their lives in Jesus' name. And whatever evil power is operating in any life to do any evil sin, I take authority over that evil sin right now in Jesus' name. You're loosed. You're free. You're delivered. The Lord set everyone free in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have hatred against the word of God unconsciously, unintentionally, helplessly. They have brought themselves to think of swine, of material things more important than their soul, more important than their salvation, more important than their savior. And they do not know that they are on their way to perdition to hell. Oh Lord, deliver them from antagonism in Jesus' name. From the hatred that will destroy them. From the persecution that will destroy them. From their sending Christ away from their lives that will destroy them. Save them in Jesus' name. New life for everyone. Peaceful life for everyone. Reasonable life for everyone. Righteous life for everyone. Instead of violence, let there be peace. Instead of wickedness, let there be calmness. And I pray, Lord, the evidence of real conversion you will exhibit and demonstrate in every life in Jesus' name. Reveal in everyone the very evidence of true conversion and give everyone the passion and the desire to carry out the task of the true convert in Jesus' name. And as we all go at every opportunity talking to people around us about Christ, the Savior, Christ, the healer, Christ, the redeemer, Christ, the one who is all in all for us. We we'll pray, Lord, our message of redemption will be believable by the people we're talking to in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, many will come out of sin, come out of darkness, come out of their dungeon, come out of captivity and they'll come to Christ the Lord as their Savior in Jesus' name. As your people go back home, go with them. The joy of salvation, go with them. The joy of liberation, go with them. And the joy of being more than a conqueror, go with them. And the triumph of consecration, go with everyone. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.